Um, what is fiscal year? What is visa bulletin? And what are your thoughts um, on where things are headed? Can you please explain and what's going to happen most likely this coming October, which is a couple of months from now? Yeah, yeah. I think this is uh, particularly uh, important and uh, relevant to our friends from India. Um, as uh, you know, and, and they definitely know, um, we are continuing to um, suffer with uh, very long visa backlog wait times. And um, that is, I think, one of the big reasons why, um, you know, EB1A is um, kind of presented itself as an option. And we have, you know, focused on the EB1A as an opportunity to uh, take people from uh, the EB2 uh, backlog into an EB1 scenario where they could then file their adjustment of status, which is not subject to any backlog, which remains current and has been current for some time now. So for those of you who are in the EB2 and EB3 category, and you're wondering about the uh, you know, fiscal year and uh, it now coming to an end. So just so you understand, the fiscal year um, will start on October 1st. So we're, you know, obviously at the end of August, last week of August is coming up. And then we're going to have September. September will be the last year of the, I'm sorry, the last month of the fiscal year. And um, in, uh, with regard to the backlog and adjustment of status, um, the dates are now at um, December 1st, 2014 for India adjustment of status for the EB2 category oh, wow. and February 15, 2012 for EB3. So wow, what that means, Mary, yeah. is if one, um, you know, has his or her uh, employer sponsor them in an EB3 category more than a decade ago, mm -hmm. more than 10 years ago, they are still waiting for an opportunity to file for their green card, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and just to illustrate how, you know, um, like, you know, touchy of a subject this is, your own, you know, like you look at, for example, um, you know, you're obviously, uh, you know, proud of your heritage, you know, hailing from the Philippines and, um, you know, coming to the U.S. And, and a beautiful, you know, story of, you know, immigration and hope, uh, you know, with your talents. Um, you know, could you imagine going through that process and being approved for you know, a, a immigration petition, but then being told, oh, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait, you know, one year, two year, three year, 10 years, 10 years, and still nothing has happened. That's why it's important for people to take matters into their own hands and think about what are the self-petition options that could get me out of this employment-based backlog, right? Because again, if you're EB3 and you're looking at 2012, I mean, it's it's not looking pretty. Even if you filed an adjustment of status, let's say you're because the thing about the EB three is that the dates actually were uh, further advanced, and then they retrogressed. They came backwards, and it caused uh, people who even have already filed their adjustment of status to now, you know, again be back in the position of of waiting. So their adjustment of status applications will not be processed. Um, while they're waiting, if if they were filed when the date was current and then it retrogressed. Oh, so wow. now that we're in, uh, you know, the last or coming up on the last month of the fiscal right. year, uh, USCIS committed to like, you know, really try to push through a lot of these adjustment of status. And we have seen more movement, I think, than past years. But we are, um, you know, at the end of the rope, I think, uh, with that. And now uh, December 1st, 2014 is EB2. That's okay. how fiscal year 22 will end. And then October will be the first month of the new fiscal year. So around September 15th, the um, State Department initially, they'll issue a bulletin and they will inform the, the folks that are interested what the uh, you know actual date for filing of adjustment of status based on EB2 and EB3, which are the relevant subject matters, because as you know, EB1 is current. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the dates of filing uh, for your green card if you are from India? And this also applies to China to a lesser degree. So, um, you know, it's it's just, again, I cannot uh, overstate how important it is for folks to 
really get their um, you know profiles evaluated for a self petition. Mm -hmm. Both an EB two national interest waiver, even if you're on an EB two backlog, or if you're on an EB three and your date is February two thousand twelve you should file an EB2 national interest waiver so that you can benefit from the EB2 date because we're already seeing that the EB2 date is far is more advanced than the EB3. And the beautiful thing about that approach is that you actually have both. So, mm -hmm. you know, it do, they do not contradict each other. You can okay. have the EB3 employment-based track and you can have an EB2 national interest waiver track that is personal to you. Right. And that you can use for the purposes of adjustment of status or if you at some point decide to leave the U.S. or if you're already outside of the U.S., you can, you know, file for an immigrant visa if your date becomes current. So, you know, these are like really getting into the weeds a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> there who are in this situation, they know what I'm talking That's about. So I'm true. speaking yeah. directly to you, um, you yeah. know, in hopes that you can kind of take matters into your own hands and join the you know, many, uh, you know, uh, you know, clients. Probably, you know, many clients who, who've already been successful.